ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is a story time I've been super excited to make. It's been a long time since I've done a story time. I'm already talking fast. You know, I'm back in my element. But um, this was uh, kind of a video I knew I was going to make at some point. I just had to figure out when to do it. The time is now, right? The time is right now. So uh, about a month ago, a little less, so three and a half weeks or so, I went on a camping trip with eight of my friends, right, to this place in northern Minnesota called the Boundary Waters. I'm sure some of you watching this video have been there before, um, but this is my first time there. And in general, this is my first time doing any type of serious camping, right? Um, so, you know, we had planned this trip for a little bit, and there were some guys who took the initiative to organize things. And in this video, I, I might say some things that are like very minorly disrespectful, but I don't mean it that way. And I'll clarify my comments and all that, right? So we had planned this trip for a while. And basically on the week of like, you know, once everyone realizes it's really going down, because in the past, this group has had moments where, you know, to the fault of many people, myself, starting with myself, I mean, we would try to get things going. And, you know, like there's always instances, everybody out there is in some kind of group chat or friend group or like someone's like, yo, y'all trying to go to the baseball game on Saturday or yo, y'all trying to go to, you know, Japan this summer. And like, everyone's like, I'm down, I'm down, yo. And then once it gets time to actually do things, nobody wants to step up, right? Nobody wants to, everybody's just, you know, sitting on their, um, I'm going to keep this very kid friendly, I, you know, very kid friendly channel. Everyone just sits back and is passive, right? And that's one of the things that really bothers me. So this time, you know, when people really started taking the initiative to get things done, I was like, you know, I felt like a proud father in the moment, but like, okay. Regardless, um, basically, think, you know, things had gotten to the point like that. We left on Friday at 6 a.m. And this is where the story begins, okay? That Friday was, you know, a rough day. And I'm not exaggerating when I say, you know, it was one of the tougher days of my life. Um, I've had my fair share. That one ranks, you know, off the top of my head. I got to go top 17 for sure. Um, so anyway, sorry, give me a sec. I just got to rub my eyes real quick. I'm a little tired. Anyhow. Um, so we leave, uh, this twin cities area of Minnesota around 6am, which means we get there around noon. That's after stopping for food. And up until that point, you know, the car ride was pretty fun. Um, outside of the fact that, you know, our car, unfortunately we had to take a manual or a stick shift drive. Right. And even though everyone in our car had a driver's license, right only one guy could drive. There's only one person who had to drive. And that was the owner of the car. So shout out to Caleb Hamilton for that. Um, I, throughout this video, I'm going to be mentioning names. And I expect most of those people to be watching the video. But for those of people who aren't watching the video and don't know the names, right, I'll just do my best with it, okay? Um, so we get there around noon. Now, at this point, I'm going to take a lot of blame for myself for what goes down next, not in terms of a group. But going to this trip, I really trusted the people who – claim to have, you know, so on so called experience and claimed to, you know, constantly said, you know, I know what I'm doing, so everything will be fine, just follow my lead. Right. And there was two primary people in our group who had camping experience, like Boy Scouts and all that kind of stuff. And there was, you know, one person who didn't have camping experience, but I ultimately think was the person who saved the trip. Okay. We'll get to that later. So anyhow, we're there and the basic idea was we had to canoe and take all our stuff to a campsite. Now, here's where things get a little ish, uh, fishy. So anyway, we start canoeing and we ha take all our bags with us. Now, let me, let me tell you, like, these are nine, you know, grown men at this point. So you're taking a lot of stuff with you. Like, you got to pack everything. And not only does it become your own stuff, you also got to start carrying the tents. You got to start carrying the food, you know, the things that are going to help us survive this four day trip. Right. So it ends up being a lot of stuff you're carrying, but okay. Canoeing for the most part, pretty fun. Not that bad. Unless you're, you know, I know you can tell by the title of this video, but unless you're in some dire circumstances or something crazy and you don't capsize pretty chill activity, right? I'm not the best paddler in the world. Not even close. I'm definitely bottom 10 percentile, but like it's, it's pretty chill for everyone and you manage to be able to figure it out. Right. So, uh, the first step is like, we just canoe and I'm like, okay, this is hell. Like, this is really chill. You know, we canoed for like 20 minutes and we reach this place, um, where you do something called portaging. Now I didn't even know what portaging was before the trip. I'm not going to lie, but it's basically where you have to carry all your stuff from that lake through a trail to another 
the, the ending of the trail where it has another lake, right? And then you can do again, and then you do the same thing, and you bring all your stuff to the goal of getting to a campsite. Now, here's where I have to be, you know, very slightly critical of our team leader, who his name is Caleb Anderson. Okay, there's two Caleb's on our trip. This is where it gets confusing. Now, I really don't want to be too harsh here because, you know, it, that that trip I voiced some of my frustrations and I, I let the emotions get the best of me at times. And as Clay Thompson said in a recent video, you know, sometimes we look back at moments and we're not necessarily proud of them. So, I, you know, I was a little bit frustrated because I felt like, you know, whenever I see people, you know, do things that are stupid and not take any type of ownership for it, I, I do get frustrated, right? And I've been guilty of that as well. But the the gist of it was that this day one trip, none of us exactly knew how hard our original plan was. We had obviously, or I shouldn't say we, but our group leader and a couple other guys contributed to basically our portaging and canoeing plan for that day. And the general idea is your first day you want to go to lightest because, or you want to make it the easiest because just getting to your campsite and cooling down after two people have to drive for five hours is the best idea. But anyhow, we're basically doing that, and I get to the first porridge site, and um, my group, you know, with full due respect to the two other groups that first day, no doubt we had to carry the most stuff. It was me, a kid named Ethan Dye, and the group leader, Caleb Anderson, right? We had a good split, but Caleb, because he was a group leader, and to his credit, he was carrying a bunch of the tents and a bunch of those kinds of things, the food and some of that. So we ended up, I ended up having to carry like the tent bag, the food bag, and my own bag, and you know, my own fault, but my sleeping bag, all these kinds of things, right, to the next thing. And the really struggle of that is, you know, you're hiking and you're walking through that trail. And at that point, you have no idea when it ends, right? So I'm like, super tired. I'm sweating my balls off. I have bug bites. The bugs are literally, you know, walking down my whole leg. I'm getting stunned from every angle, right? And I'll blame myself a little bit for this because somebody offered me bug spray and I, I said no and I quickly regretted that. But I, I'm like getting absolutely um, – I'm trying to use an appropriate term here. Absolutely screwed by bugs while I'm carrying probably 70 pounds of stuff on my – maybe more. I mean 70 pounds doesn't sound like that much. But when you're walking and like I'm not exactly the biggest stamina and endurance and uh, weightlifter warrior. So – I'm grinding through this trail and I get to the end and I'm like, I'm dang near, I'm dang near about to, I'm dang near about to pass out. Right. And this dude, Zay, he was in, uh, so we, we were a group of nine dudes and we split into three groups of three and he was in the group ahead of me and he walks through and he sees me and he, he's like, he's like, dude, are you good? And then he sees, you know, my boy Ethan come through the back and he's like, yo, Ethan, why are you carrying just the paddles? You got to help out. It was the funniest thing ever. But like, you know, I just felt like, I, you know, I can't contribute a ton to some of the camp lifestyle. So I got to do my best when it comes to this portaging, right? But it was tough. And outside of the bags, I forgot to mention, you got to carry the canoe too. Those are 45 pound canoes, 45 pounds doesn't sound like a ton, right? But trust me, when you're carrying it for a decent amount of distance and it's weight on your shoulders and you're having difficulty balance, and especially if you're a guy like me and you start ramming it into trees and then losing your balance and then you're sweating and the bugs are coming on you. It can get tough out there, man. It can get tough, right? So, whew, sorry, I'm I'm going I'm going hard right now. We're nine minutes in this video. I'm not even close to the story. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so basically, we get through that first portage, and I'm like, that was a grind. But you know, my group leader Caleb, he said something like, "We only got like three more of those left. We're about a quarter way through." I'm like, okay, you know, that's not that bad. I'm I'm built for this, right? So we get to the next canoe stop and we do it a couple more times. And I'll admit that first portage was probably the toughest one. And that's not the fault of the organizer at all. I mean, this is not something you can really control, but we get to about four portages done. And at that point, like, it's almost like we're racing between the three groups of three. And unfortunately my group, me, Ethan and Caleb, we happen to be the slowest all the time. And I'll take some blame for that. That was probably, you know, at least a solid 45% my fault, but still, it, okay. It doesn't matter. And at that point, the first group that's way ahead, it's three guys named Ed, Zaid, and Griffin, okay? And they're way ahead of us, and at some point, we just lose them. And at some point, the group one ahead of us, sorry, it's getting a little confusing, Caleb Hamilton, Daniel, and Omar, they're like, yo, those stupid dudes went the wrong way. So now, we are lost total contact. 
even a little bit goes by and they run back into us and they're like, they're like, hey. so we get all back together and we get to the next stop and Caleb Anderson's like, okay, I think this is our last mortgage. And I'm like, T-O-J, tears of joy. Okay. We made it. We're about to go to the campsite. We're about to set up the tent and it's not raining and it's not stormy. Life is solid. You know, I'm still not ex- like, I, I got to tell something. I got to include a part of the story. It's not exactly my brightest moment once again, but the day before the trip, I tried, I tried pretty hard to drop out, not drop out willingly, but there was another friend. He kind of wanted to go shout out to Karnish. And I was like, dude, if you want to go like your spots there, I started having the ticklish feeling, right. You know? So I was there and I'm like, I'm going to make the most of it while I'm here. I'm going to do my best to keep a positive attitude. I said all that to myself. Did I succeed? Not necessarily, but anyways, life goes on. So we get that portage and Caleb Anderson says something along the lines of, okay, this is our last one. Or maybe he said it was this, uh, our second to last one. The point is he capped, he lied. Okay. So Caleb Hamilton's like, no, 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 no. We have four left. Right. And I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Are you for real right now? And at this point I did not make my frustration apparent because we are all in this goal together. None of us want to be grinding out here, but there was clearly a slight mistake in the trip planning, right? To, to have that, at that point, we had already spent, we, like I said, we got to the um, Boundary Waters around 12. They did an hour tutorial-ish. We had to sign some papers, right? That was about one. And at this point, it was already 4.30-ish, and we were halfway through a foraging, maybe even a little less than halfway. And I'm like, dude, like, we are at risk of not getting to our campsite by dark. And at that point, who knows what might happen? And that's before counting for the weather. That's before counting for when someone might do some stupid stuff. There was admittedly a member of my group who left his life jacket behind at a previous portage site. I don't know who it was between the other two guys. I know it wasn't me because I was wearing mine. So it was like, you know, <laughs> you never, you have to account for stupid stuff, right? This is why you always try to go a little early to things rather than a little late because you never know when you're going to get a flat tire, right? These types of things of that nature. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm sorry for the nose, you know, it's, it's messing me up. I don't, okay. I'm, I, I found some tissue, so it'll be fine for the rest of the video. But, um, we get to the point where, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for the slow video. I'm just trying to collect my thoughts, you know, um, we get like, we're at the halfway mark. And at this point, like I'm a little frustrated, but I kept it internal because getting mad at that point, it wasn't going to do anything for anyways. And it wasn't like I was mad to the point where, you know, I needed to have a rage, but it started getting tough. There was this one portage I remember where um, I was not carrying the canoe, but I was carrying the bags. And the dude ahead of me, Zay, he was carrying the canoe. And the can- it, it depends. I think most people would say carrying the canoe was harder than the bags. But, you know, I have some slight bias. But that day, like I was, pr- like I said, I was carrying a lot of pounds. I, I might have overestimated when I said 70, but it's within the realm of possibility. Um, the food bag itself was 40, and I was carrying that. Me and Caleb were taking turns between the canoe and the bags. And I was like, so tired uh, to the point I want to take a break. And I see this dude say trucking ahead of me with the canoe. And I'm like, dude, if he's got that dog in him, I have to keep going. So I'm like, I'm grinding through. And at one point we catch up to the group ahead of us, which is once again, Caleb, Daniel Omar, other Caleb and Caleb Hamilton was like halfway through guys keep pushing. And I day near, like it wasn't even his folders. I Daniel was about to punch him in the face. I'm like halfway. What is blood waffle? Though? And we have no way we're halfway. Right. And, the way they measured out there is it's like rods. So we were like, that one was 80 rods and we were only 40 rods. Basically the terrain sucked. So that portage was really tough. So let me keep the trip. Let me keep the thing going. I expected this video to be shorter, but you're getting a treat or a non-treat, I guess, put on two times speed if you need to. I'm sorry. Um, So we get through that portage. And at this point, I think everyone's really tired. We're still canoeing, grinding. And at some point, we get through everything and we reached a lake where our supposed campsites are supposed to be around 7 30 PM. Now at this point, there had been this one guy with a paddleboard trailing us and he becomes relevant later in the story. Okay. Um, this guy was like, um, he was like fully tatted up in a tank top. Like he was chilling by himself. And he's like, yeah, I come here four times a year. And we had some interactions with him. He seemed pretty chill. And he was behind us for basically the whole trip. And when you get off the lake, you have to like dock your canoe and take all the stuff out. It takes a little bit. So he was stuck behind us for maybe like an hour or two. And I can understand why he was a little frustrated, but he didn't show anything. I 
bigger, we should try to let him pass us if we can, but it, it's not so simple, right? It's not so simple. He becomes relevant a little later. So we get to the lake. And this lake, as far as I can recall, has three campsites, okay? So there's three campsites around this lake somewhere, okay? And like I said, my group was the last one, but we see the two groups ahead of us. And like I said, this is around, now that we're circling, like it's around 8 p.m. ish. And they're like, yo, guys, every campsite is full. And at this point, like, once again, all things are crossed into my mind. I'm dang near considering, like, I got my life jacket on. I might as well take a swim for it because at this point, it's every man. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. But, like, I didn't I, – I was, I was starting to, you know, get a little concerned, right? I'm like, it's 8 p.m. Dusk is in about an hour, right? It's a little later because it's up north. A sunset's in about an hour, not dusk. And we don't have our campsite. And even after we get to our campsite, we have to set up our tent. We have to make all the food. We have to hang up all the food so the bears don't take it. We got to do all this ideally before dusk, but okay, it's not the end of the world if we don't get there, right? Fire exists, some other things exist. So I'm like, okay, so I can't remember who it was. I wish I could, that I could give credit to, but somebody was like, okay. And I, and I, I imagine this was Caleb Hamilton because he was our primary navigator. And earlier when I referred to somebody who didn't have campy experience, but I think saved the trip, I was referring to him, okay? And at some point he said something like, okay, there's one more portage we can do. And then there's five campsites in the lake after that. And I'm like, Ooh, okay. One of the things about the boundary waters is, you know, when you play a video game, right, there's always this option quit game, right? No matter what, like, even if you're in the middle of the game, let's say you're playing a Valorant game or a CSGO or a League of Legends game, there's always an option to quit. Even if you're in the middle, will you receive a penalty for it? Yes. Will you even potentially receive a ban for it? Yes. But there's always an option to quit. And this is something I didn't realize about the Boundary Waters. In the Boundary Waters, there's no quit game button. When we were already doing those eight portages, even if we wanted to somehow get out of there, there was no way we could. We were stuck there for the rest of the night, right? I know that doesn't sound that bad, but at this point, once again, a little panic going through, okay? So Caleb Hamilton's like, all right, we can get through this next portage, canoe through the next lake. It'll be like maybe nine, but we can find a campsite. And that's what's important. So respect for my boy. I think it was him. Maybe it was somebody else. Don't want to miss, you know, don't want to give the Ron um, credit. You know, this is why it's important to cite your sources. Anyhow, okay, we get through the next portage. Once again, everyone's a little tired. Now it's around nine. Sunset's about to start-ish, okay? We canoe to the first campsite, Okay. Now, the guy I referred to earlier on the paddleboard, he's here, okay? But once again, my group is the third back, and our other two groups pull up here. And me, Caleb, and Ethan were all like, yo, there's someone there. We can't be here. Because once again, every campsite can only have one group, actually. And one group can consist of most nine people, right? So we are nine. He is one. One plus nine equals ten. 10, you're not allowed to have 10 at one campsite. You're only allowed to have nine max. So we get there and it's like, you know, we're not allowed to be here, but obviously nobody's going to kick us off because I don't think they have patrol agents or whatever. And the reason we pulled over was A, because, you know, it had been a long day and we were kind of tired. We were kind of looking for the first campsite that we could even set up at. And B, all of a sudden there's this thunderstorm brewing in. All right. Um, not exactly, but you could tell the storm clouds were coming. It was, had turned into complete darkness. Like earlier today, it was pretty beautiful out. Now it was like, it was starting to get pretty grim. You know, it's, this is some stuff from a movie. That's what everyone kept saying after this happened. This is something from a movie, you know? And at that point, um, apparently my teammates, I'm going to call them teammates. I got to give them that respect. Asked the guy or like, they're like, you know, the thunderstorm coming. Are you cool if we stay here? And he was like, Apparently, he started giving, like, a pretty pretty nasty attitude. Apparently, he was like, I guess. I mean, and it was, it was like, a little nasty because, like, yeah, we're all, like, at this point, 18, 19-year-olds, and we should know what we're doing. But, like, dude, it's like, this is getting pretty serious. You've come here four times a year on your own. Like, you know, I it was, like, it was a little, you know, some of our groupmates weren't the happiest with him, but some people got what he was saying. I was somewhere in between, right? Like, I... He might have been frustrated because he was behind us the whole day. But it, it just felt like a little bit like, why would he care if we were here, right? So we pull up. And at that point, Caleb Anderson, and I'm going to give him credit here, you know. Like I said, like, I, I'm, I'm in, input, in an in-between spot with him. Because in certain aspects, you know, in my opinion, I will not lie, he failed, right? 
But I know he did try his best. He planned out a lot of things. He got a lot of things. He provided a lot. So I, I don't want to disrespect him at all. But we'll get to more later, right? He, you know, what I'm basically saying is he did a good job. He did in his mind what was the best. But sometimes your mind is not always reality, I guess, you know. So once, like, basically, he's like, you know what? I'm going to go by myself to this next campsite, okay? I'm going to check if it's open. If it is, I'll come back and we're all going to go over there. And some people are, like, sitting there like, yo, don't go, dude. Like, it's about the storm. It's not a good idea for us to split even 1v8. Don't go. And I'm, like, I'm of the vote. Like, this dude, like, he's clearly sound in his mind. Just let him go. So I, I was one of the people who was like, hey, dude, let him go. He's, he's got it. He's gotten under control. Let him go. So he solo canoes over to the campsite, right? And he, like, does it, like, standing up or some some weird stuff. I don't even know what he did. So he solo canoes to the next campsite. And we're all just sitting there waiting for him, watching the storm clouds come in. We can't even set up the tent because if we're going to move, what's the point of setting up the tent? So we're literally just sitting around. And I'll be honest, at this point, I, I had a little bit of a negative attitude. I started saying, like, you know, Kearney should be here instead of me, like, it was, once again, there's certain moments we're not proud of. And that was one of them, you know, not that I will say, I don't think I said anything wrong. You know, I think everything I said was the truth, but sometimes there's, there's moments where, you know, you just, there's things you do say and there's things you don't say. And like, I'll be honest, like there were certain things that I said that were not productive at all. Right. Even if they were true, you know, that's something I have to acknowledge. I have to be a bit, be a bit better at. Right. So I'm there. And at that, at that point, I started to have a pretty bad attitude because we are have no campsite. We've been here nine hours. We've been grinding. We don't even know what's going to happen. We don't know if that campsite's open. We don't know what the storm is going to do to us. Like, there's this one saying, right? You can survive three weeks without food, three, day, uh, three days without water, right? And then three hours without shelter. I don't know if that's a completely – I've heard it somewhere, right? The three, the three weeks without food part is pretty true. Three days without water part is pretty true. The three hours without shelter never completely made sense to me. Because, like, the way I thought of it as a kid was, like, if you're out on a sunny day, why could you not survive without shelter? But it might have been a little naive of me. I think the idea was in poor weather conditions, you can get screwed up pretty quickly. So um, I'm starting to get pretty worried once again. But I'm not, I'm not like, over panicking. So – we're all just sitting there waiting and we're all talking and we're like, and at this point, the overall group of I was pretty negative. Like nobody was in a good mood and how could you be, right? So Caleb Anderson comes back and he's, he shouts. He's like, he's pretty far away. He shouts. He's like, it's open. It's open. So at that point, we're in like a group of eight and there's a little bit of like, do we go? Do we not? Like, what if this storm does something? At this point, it's not raining, but it looks like it could rain any second, you know? So none of us are sure of what to do. And eventually, like, somebody, you know, is just like, I think we should go. And I'm like, I chime in. And I'm like, we should probably go. Like, this guy's not happy with us. I would rather not be on a campsite with him, too. Let's book it, right? And at a certain point, like, there was a couple guys who were very hesitant on it, you know, and no disrespect to them at all. Like, it's very understandable. But at a certain point, peer pressure exists, no matter whether or not you want to admit it or not. And as soon as one of us hopped in the canoe, the rest of us were in, right? So eventually we get to our same groups. It's me, Ethan, Caleb. Ahead of us, it's Daniel, Omar, and the other Caleb. And ahead of them, it's Ed, Griffin, and Zay. And once again, um, we're on our way. Now, this next campsite, it's not very close, right? Um, that's the one thing about canoeing. It takes a while, even if something looks close, right? Perception isn't always reality, you know? That's uh, That's one of my father's favorite sayings, right? So... <coughs> excuse me lawn video here so we start going as soon as we start going it starts raining and the clouds are coming in lightning is already you can already see it it's coming in caleb anderson was very vocal about we should go because the storm has already passed us you see the clouds he started talking like he thinks he's a meteorologist he thinks he's some you know jason carlson who i'm going to mention again here in a second he thinks he's like future iowa state meteorology program graduate and i'm like you know, do I believe this dude? No. Do I believe him more than whatever I think? Yeah. So we had to go with it, right? Starts raining lightly. Campsite's about, I would give an estimate of a nine minute canoe. I don't know if that's accurate. I would have to talk to my boys about this, but it's pretty late. I mean, I'm not about to pause the video to go ask them, right? Nine minute estimate sounds about right. So 
we hit it and it starts raining lightly and at this point i'm chilling right it's it's not a good moment but if we can get to this campsite it's like toj right tears of joy so we're we're paddling and it starts raining harder and at this point once again i'm a little worried right have we capsized at all today no is capsizing something that you can usually control probably right but one of the things I say is, right, like, I know, of, you know, one, I said I was going to mention Jason Carlson, right? I know this dude lost his phone forever and because his boat capsized. And that's a guy who goes camping all the time. He's familiar with the outdoors. And as far as I know, the weather, I, I don't know if the weather caused it or not. I'd have to ask him. It doesn't, it's not too relevant. But it happens, right? It definitely happens that things capsize, right? So at this point, it starts raining really hard. The wind is picking up, so our boat is slightly shaking, not shaking crazy, but our boat is slightly shaking, and I'm not scared I'm going to get struck by lightning, right? I researched before a trip. I made sure of this. One in 15,000 chance you get struck by lightning, right? Pretty good odds, you know? I am kind of involved, you know, I'm a, I'm a stats major, right? Like, so I have to believe the probabilities. So we're, we're chilling there, and wind, we're not chilling, actually. Screw what I just said. Wind picking up. Rain picking up, thunder in the skies. Okay, is it right by us? No. Could it be by us soon? Maybe. Am I worried? Yes. Okay, that's basically the situation. Now, once again, we're the third, third group, and for whatever reason, we're always the slowest. Okay, is whatever reason me? Maybe. I don't know for sure, right? But we're the slowest. And at this point, right, once again, our boat's checking. The water, you can feel it. It's cold, man. So, this is the thing. If you capsize, yes, you have a life jacket. I'll get to that later. You don't necessarily. And yes, we're all competent swimmers. But most of the time when you fall in the water, you don't die because you can't swim. You die because of like the hypothermia and the coldness and all that. So, I mean, at this point, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to see this earth again. Like, I, you know, it's it's a realistic possibility that something's going to, something bad's about to happen. So we're still paddling. And once again, we're falling further and further behind the group ahead of us the groups ahead of us, right? I see them way ahead. And I'll tell the story um, that uh, first off, the group ahead of us, Daniel, Caleb, Omar, right? Um, apparently, Omar was being like, you know, he was giving all these like quotes, like presidential quotes or whatever. And Daniel was like, he's like me, man. We were thinking along the same lines. Like, this is a movie, like, but it's scary as that, right? And he's like, he quotes, and I quote, just effing paddle that's what he said to omar and everyone heard it and it was funny as f right and likewise in our boat there was a guy kind of you know similar to omar right outdoors experience you know um or or i don't want to call this guy similar to omar that might be offensive to omar but like he was like you know all about this like david goggins masculinity i'm not scared of anything which i respect right every guy on this earth has some form of, you know, like, I want to show, like, I'm the boss, right? I, at least I think so, you know? But here's what I'll say. Like, at a certain point, you overdo it and you become annoying and you become cringe. Like, we are, you know, whether or not, like, you want to admit it, like, is it right to be, like, super scared you're going to die? Probably not. You shouldn't panic, right? But everyone have should have a certain, you know, what's it called? I, I took AP Psychology, but I can't remember exactly the the term or the the body part is it like the fight or flight no it's not the fight or flight thing but it's like it's like the neurological response or whatever like the the the, the brain just the brain screw it, just the brain the brain power to know hey we're in a slightly dangerous situation where our boat could easily tip over right and this dude is sitting here talking about like david goggins would be so happy to be here and he, and he starts like basically like slobbering andrew tate and doing all these things and i'm starting to get really annoyed because like once again, dude, it's okay to have your idols, even if, like, I don't see eye to high. It's okay to, like, not be scared of anything, bro. But don't overdo it, man. You're just getting annoying. So this is what me and both Ethan thought. You know, you know who the guy I'm referring to is. And uh, once again, story continues. The people way ahead of us, Zade, Griffin, and Ed. I hear from them later. I say, I talk to Griffin. He goes, dude, I look back at your boat, and I see the dude in front of you and the dude behind you are not wearing life jackets. And I'm like, and I didn't know about this thing until later. I was locked in. I tell you, I was locked in. And I hear Ethan and Griffin were both, I mean, Ethan and Caleb were both not wearing life jackets. Caleb, it makes complete sense. That dude, 
you could offer him a life jacket while he was ground, drowning and he'd decline it because he said that's what David Goggins would want him to do. I don't even know if that, that, that's that guy's name, David Goggins. With full due respect, I, I don't know who he is. That's wild. So I, I was just recording and it hit the 30 minute limit for free users on Screencastify. So I had to get a part two. I'll either edit it. I'll probably try to edit it together, but if not, I'll have to make it a two part or that would be wild. Um, so once again, starting to get annoyed. I talked to Griffin. He says, the two people in your boat don't have a life jacket on. Once again, Caleb, he probably wanted that way. Ethan, I don't know what that dude was thinking, bro. Because the thing is, I thought, you know, as we got closer to the campsite, I'm not going to lie, this dude, Ethan, put his paddle down and he started saying, I can't see, I can't see. Because once again, it started raining pretty hard. So he starts reaching in the water and splashing water in his eyes. So at this point, we only have two people paddling, right? Does that become easier or harder to balance? I don't know. We have one guy who's literally reaching in the water. So his momentum's ported, pointing one way, right? And he's splashing his eyes and he doesn't have a life jacket on. And at this point, the, the thought crosses my mind. I said, I love Ethan Die. That's my friend. That's one of the nicest guys I've ever known. If he falls in that, le- if he falls in that lake, am I going to go in there and save him? Like, I, it, it crossed my mind, dude. I didn't know what I was going to do, dude. Because I knew Caleb sure as hell wasn't saving him. So was I going to save him or was he going to die or was he going to save himself? I didn't know, man. I didn't know. Luckily, we didn't reach that point. But back to the story, man. I talked to I talked to Zade after and Zade goes, you know, me, Ed and Griffin, we set out an early lead. You know, it's like the amazing race. We knew we were going to get to the pit stop first. And he says, I look behind us. I saw Daniel Ed, and Omar. They were pretty far behind us. I was worried about their livelihood. Then I look back too far. I saw you, Caleb, and Ethan, and I knew you guys weren't making it. He said that. He said there was no way you guys were making it. Like I said, the rain is picking up. The wind is picking up. Thunder all over the place, dude, you know? And he's like, I knew – I was sure you guys weren't going to make it. And I, I asked him. I said, as a, you know, Zayd is, you know, a great guy. And I said, you know, do you think you, Ed, and Griffin would have came back to save us if we didn't make it? And he goes, nah. <laughs> He says, he and, and he makes a really valid point. Like, at that point, if you come back to try to save something, you're just endangering yourself. Like, there's just a higher chance we all would have died. I'm slightly exaggerating some of the things of the story, but I think I covered most of the points. Basically, I'm in a boat when it's really rainy and really windy. The two guys by me are not wearing life jackets. One of them is, you know, regurgitating Andrew Tate quotes and, and things of that nature. And, um... Well, I don't even know. I don't want to make false labels here, but he's basically regurgitating like the classic, you know, things you would hear from like uh, someone who like thinks very like, you know, highly of whatever. Like, I don't even know what to say. And ahead of me, you got a guy who's not wearing a life jacket, who's splashing water into his eyes while we're trying to make it to shore. And we end up turning and we make it there and we're soaked right? But we get through it. The rain stops maybe 20 minutes after we set up the tent. That night, I'm still, you know, I'm glad we made it through a movie. I was sure it was probably going to be a good memory somewhere down the line. But already, I'm, 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 I'm pretty, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly in the best mood because of what just happened, right? Um, but we managed to make it through the rest of the trip. And as the days go by, it got better. We made it through a 400 rod portage, which was one of the goofiest experiences of my life. In the meanwhile, we had to wait 30 minutes in the cold to let other people go through. Um, But overall, it it ended up being a, I would say, a successful trip, all things considered. And I'm happy I went. I'll say that. I'm happy I went and I learned some things along the way. So, story recap. It's a long one. This is... This is my longest video ever. It's up there. It's up there. Not longest ever because I used to make some really long videos. But longest story time ever as far as I remember. Um, man, let me know y'all thoughts down below. I'm sorry that it was this long because I did ramble a lot. I repeated points a lot. I'm sure I wasn't the most clear about things. Um, hopefully I was fair in my story. Like the points I made were valid. Um, I hope I didn't, you know, I hope... Basically, when I make these videos, my, my goal is, and even when I made videos in the past like that, potentially controversial and like call out certain people, my hope was always that if that person watched the video, 
right? In this video, I'm not even calling anyone out. These are all my friends. But if my point was like, for example, when I made like story time, I got snaked or story time, like, you know, uh, like things of that nature. My goal was always, if this person watched a video, this person that I'm calling out, would everything I said still be true and still reign valid to the point where they can't really be upset with what I'm saying. And every time I finish a video, I wouldn't upload if I didn't feel that was the case. So most of the time I did upload because it was the case, but like, uh, that, you know, that's what I mean. I, I make all these stories just to have a good time. And I do tell the truth in all of them. I, and I try my best to give a full perspective and, and be measured and not be impulsive. Right. And that's why I like those videos, even though I called certain people out, right. And they saw it and they, you know, I'm sure they weren't the happiest about it, but like they couldn't, say anything was unfair about what I said because it was all true right you, you get what I'm saying so I hope this video is the same way where like even though I didn't exactly speak in like the most positive light about Caleb Andrews I wouldn't say I spoke in a negative light about him either and I'd also say everything I said was fair he has his own perspective and he'll I'm sure he'll leave it down in the comment section below and he'll say something like oh you know Ashton's a giant you know scaredy cat and he doesn't like rain you know because I mean that's something he'd say right but like, and I hope same thing for everyone else on the trip, the other seven boys that I was with, I hope they all say I had a fair perspective and this is an accurate representation of what happened. Right. Anyways, I appreciate y'all watching. This is a lot of video. It might've not been the easiest to understand, but I hope it was a good one too. Let me know if you want to see more content like this. Let me know if you, you know, we had some legendary moments on this trip. I didn't even cover in this video. We had a time where someone put on another person's pair of boots and didn't realize for three hours we had someone take a huge fall off the canoe while they were trying to get off. And it looked like they were like bleeding from the knee. And the first thing they did as they stood up was check their watch. We had some wild moments. Let me know if you want to hear about it. Appreciate y'all watching until next time. Peace. Ash and Jin is out.